Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you a overview of strength and conditioning for field hockey. So if you're a player or a coach and looking for uh, insights into how you can prepare physically for the sport, then this video is for you. So what I'm going to look at is a few different areas, but I want to start off by looking at the demands of the sport first and foremost. So hockey is an intermittent repeat sprint sport. That means that there are periods of high intensity efforts interspersed with short periods of recovery and this differs by position so for example uh, a forward is expected to do more sprint distance relatively and defenders are likely to do a little bit more total distance that's often because of the amount of time they're spending on the pitch and the uh, sort of demands placed on them in terms of the position that they play common injuries are including things like lower back pain ankle sprains and hamstring issues and these are all related to the kind of positions and shapes and movements required of hockey players so, for example, lower back pain is caused um, in part because of the flexion positions, um, the sort of deep hip flexion positions as well. So if there's a little bit of limited range in hip flexion um, or limited range in the ankle, for example. Some of these things can mean that the lower back gets put into sort of positions and experiences stresses that would um, ordinarily be dissipated. Uh, and if that's not the case, then you're going to be at higher risk of injury. Ankle sprains because of the kind of unexpected changes of direction that sometimes occur and hamstrings again because of those low positions and high speed sprinting uh, sort of exposures as well. And then there's a large aerobic demand because of the amount of running that you have to do. So you often ex are expected to do, you know, between five to nine kilometers worth of running um, at the high levels of the sport. And, you know, this may be a little bit lower at lower levels of the sport, but generally you're going to be covering a lot of distance in general uh, and the interspersed periods of recovery between those high intensity actions mean that there's a high demand placed on you aerobically as well. This then means there are three kind of broad areas that uh, we can kind of contribute towards in terms of strength and conditioning. So one is repeat sprint ability um, and that means being able to perform consecutive sprints with minimal recovery. One is tissue capacity the ability for a tissue to withstand repeated loading and this is related to things such as the hamstring, calf, trunk, adductor which are placed under a lot of stress and this relates to the um, injury site that is most uh, or the injury sites rather that are most commonly experienced. And then finally strength and mobility so being able to express high amounts of force in large ranges. The greater the range we can sort of uh, put our bodies through um, the less stress is that those tissues are going to experience um, in terms of the repeated nature of it and then the more force that we can produce the harder we can hit the ball the stronger we are in no positions and the less overall physical cost that things like decelerations place on the joints of the body so these are kind of three key areas we're looking to address so if we've got an athlete who can perform you know repeated high intensity actions without without sort of fading towards the end of the game um, I've got all the tissues that I've just mentioned there as well as others can withstand high amounts of loading and then you've got good ranges of motion at the various joints and the ability to express lots of force through them. They're going to be able to uh, hopefully tolerate and excel in the context of the game of hockey. Obviously things like aerobic capacity come into this too um, but these kind of underpin these rather than being an out and out um, sort of performance aim if you like so being aerobically fit enough to be able to tolerate the repeat sprint demands of the game um, is, a, is a key focus um, and obviously things like power are underpinned by strength as well so there are other areas that we would cover off but these are the sort of three key ones what this means is we can place a hierarchy of needs sort of model into this context a hierarchy um, is obviously where certain things are more important than others and in this context we mean that the first rung of the ladder is robustness so we're trying to maximize availability of players by minimizing injury risk um, and keeping our best players on the pitch as much as we can and keeping all of our players available for as much time as possible imagine if you've got a small squad and you uh, lose you know a, a number of players because of injury well now they have no impact on the game so it's better to have all of your players available um, for the majority of the season than to have a small number of players uh, constantly available and players who are always getting injured because they haven't got the ability to tolerate the training and competition stresses that are going to be experienced um, during the game. 
once we've told once we've sort of generated some of these things we can worry about the intensities we're trying to increase the maximal physical outputs of players so now we're worried about trying to increase maximal force expression maximal um, sprint speed and these things underpin things like repeat power repeat repeat sprint ability which are the kind of key physical determinants of the sport so robustness looks like aerobic capacity it looks like tissue capacity looks like good ranges of motion and you know imagine if a player hasn't got particularly good calf capacity and they're always getting ankle and calf issues it doesn't matter how fast they are because they're going to be impacted by that and it's going to limit their ability to play so it's better to worry about keeping players available first and then we can worry about getting them quicker later because also things like aerobic capacity and tissue capacity are far more trainable and we're able to improve them to a larger degree in the short term than sprint speed which takes a little bit longer to try and really improve and then finally we've got repeatability and this is where we're trying to get more specific in terms of the demands of the sport so on the far left we've got very general qualities and on the far right we've got very specific qualities each step prior to this though enables you to gradually move closer to the sport specificity end of the equation so for example on the left we're just trying to keep play, keep people available through general physical training means trying to increase the tolerance to load of various tissues in the middle we're trying to increase the physical outputs of um, of our players so trying to increase the maximum they're, they're sort of capable of and then finally we're trying to take all of those things and be, enable the players to be able to repeat high intensity actions uh, multiple times in a row and this is where we start to really make a big impact in terms of performance if you're then going to put that into a weekly sort of structure these are some general guidelines to aim for obviously it's going to depend on context but the rule of two is a useful one so we're going to try and complete two mobility sessions um, in a week two strength training sessions in a week two tissue capacity and two aerobic conditioning sessions and the content of those sessions is what's going to differ based on the needs of the individual but if everyone can try and aim to get these sort of boxes ticked every week it's going to allow you to accumulate uh, good volumes of training which in the long run is going to keep you robust injury free and long term begin to increase your performance for example we can put these things together though so you don't have to do eight separate sessions your mobility strength and tissue capacity can all be lumped into one session if you like so if you've only got two 45 minute slots in the week you might be doing 10 minutes of mobility um, 20 minutes of strength training um, and then you've got 15 minute sort of tissue capacity work as well so something like you know five to ten minutes of thoracic hip ankle mobility uh, 15 minutes 20 minutes of strength training sort of traditional unilateral bilateral strength training exercises like split squats Romanian deadlifts back squats um, single leg leg pressing tissue capacity work around there as I said the calf calf raises adductor um, things like Copenhagen's hamstring bridges Nordics and then trunk conditioning and then two other sessions in a week which are more aerobic focused again if you're an athlete who just needs to increase aerobic capacity as it as it is then things like long aerobic intervals might be the content in these sessions if you're an athlete who's already ticked off those boxes it might be that you're doing more of a repeat sprint focus but ultimately all of these things are trying to increase the ability of players to be robust available and be able to perform high intensity actions repeated over a long duration of time so that's a sort of overall weekly structure of how that would all tie together if you're interested in learning more um, you can subscribe to my email list at integratesports.com forward slash subscribe and that will get you 20 percent off your first purchase also every week i share content specific to hockey around um, training injury and performance so if you're interested you can sign up with the link below in the description